Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Join with me in the glory. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your province, that your church may joyfully serve you in quiet confidence and godly peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated and attentive to the reading of God's Word. morning's Old Testament reading is from Genesis. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. 
on your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. You shall, your desire shall be contrary to your husband's, but he shall rule over you. And to Adam, he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made for Adam and his wife garments of skins and clothed them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we will read uh, Psalm 130 by whole verse. <clears throat> Out of the deep have I called unto you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O oh, let your ears consider well the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, were to mark what is done amiss, O oh, Lord, who could abide it? For there is mercy with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my trust. My soul waits for the Lord. More than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, trust in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Today's New Testament reading is from 2 Corinthians. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Lord, to you, Lord Christ. Then Jesus went home, and the crowds gathered again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. As for the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebub, and by the prince of demons he cast out demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, 
that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan is risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds a strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man, and whatever blasphemes they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an internal sin. For they were saying, he has an unclean spirit. And his mothers and brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside, seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let me do this in steps. May the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, always be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. I feel a little bit, uh, uh, I'm always discombobulated, so there's got to be something else, but it's kind of, it's awkward. It's uh, the deacon's missing today. Uh, he's out uh, at a reenact, not a, it's a historical period thing for, for reenactors, and so he's doing church there, probably at this very moment in time. Uh, I forget what chaplain or what heir he's going to be, but you remember the kit that we uh, blessed last week, he's using that. So I'm assuming Vietnam, somewhere around that area. <clears throat> He'll be uh, uh, having service there. We pre-consecrated some Eucharist and some uh, yeah, some hosts and wine for him to take, and he gets to preach the sermon, and, and he'll be, you know, he's, hey, it's good, it's fun. It's an outreach that he has done for the last few years, uh, and we're always, we're just really great to be a part of it, and uh, we're really excited to be a part of it, uh, because people that would have missed service have a place to go, uh, and they have an opportunity to reach those that may not have even considered church, but sitting in a soldier's uniform, <clears throat> listening to the chaplain rail on, probably brings back good memories for some of them, I hope. Anyway, so anyway, you'll have to excuse me. Uh, this has been a long day for me already, and uh, part of that was outside. So uh, I encourage you to try the eight o'clock mass uh, sometime this summer uh, outside. It's fun, it's nice, it's kind of relaxing. Um, and um, I just encourage you to do that. Also this week is just a, a little of announcement. Keep an eye on your inboxes for your email. Uh, they'll be sending out or will be sending out some information about registration and the upcoming uh, regional synod in Kentucky this year uh, in St. Louis. So uh, we have some information and about lodging and places to stay and who will be there. So I'm just giving you a heads up that it's there for those who are making summer plans. Louisville, what did I say? St. Louis. It's at St. Stephen's. Not even St. Louis in Louisville. It's St. Stephen's in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's good. I was thinking this week, or pausing this week, maybe somewhat overwhelmed this week, uh, when I was posting the services from last week and catching up on SoundCloud and stuff, and I was looking at our, our YouTube channel, uh, there's 85 recorded services there. And I thought, man, that's, that's a lot. That's, that's like a whole year and some. Um, there's a couple evening prayers in there early on, but mostly that's, you know, that's, that's a lot. And then I, I went over to SoundCloud where we put just the homily, where we just take the homily and so you can record it, or let's just listen to that. You don't have to do the whole service. And, 
And there's like 215 sermons there. And that's just five years. I've been here 13 years. Uh, for a bulk of those 13 years, I've done two sermons on them every Sunday, and sometimes three. That 215 doesn't count the whole 13 years. It doesn't count every wedding, homily, uh, funeral, uh, class, um, or any time that I'm just liable to jump up on a soapbox in the parking lot. Um, it, 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 I, I was just overwhelmed by the amount of words that I say. I've apologized to Nancy several times this week uh, because she's had to endure <laughs> all these and endure me. And I, I realized I was looking at some pictures of um, us visiting Tim and Anna in, in Kentucky a few years back. And there's a picture of me and Tim on the couch and there's like this five string of picture things. And I'm, I'm obviously talking because my hands are waving in the air. Uh, but I'm talking and talking and talking and, and Tim is just listening and listening and listening and I'm looking at all these and I'm going like, oh my gosh, I, I should apologize to everybody I know because this is just all I do. Um, I, took, I just talk. For a Christian, and, I, and, I, let, and let me add, <clears throat> I've been doing this since I was 16. That's a good hunk of my life. Uh, 65 now. So at 16, I did my first sermon. I haven't done sermons every week during that, but I was constant, at least monthly, and then more. We as Christians know that the words are important. God, it's one of the first things we know about God is he spoke creation into existence. We know that there's something about the word that God uses to create. Proverbs, Paul, and other writers in the scripture tells us that life and death are in the tongue. James warns us that a misplaced word um, can, can like set the world ablaze and that it's easier to control animals and, and <clears throat> other things rather than to control our own mouths at times. And Nancy's going, amen. <laughs> amen. It's even more important when we realize that the, the, uh, the gospel of John introduces that, that whole concept of logos. In the beginning was the word, the logos, and the logos was with God. And then the Logos created the world. That word of God created the world. And then he tells us that that word is Jesus. We as Christians know, really, the power that lies behind the word. Not only the word Jesus, his scripture. John makes that connection. The scripture writers and Paul makes that scripture. The scripture is the word of God. And what we say, especially what we say to one another. I say that because some of this, uh, I was struck, if you remember the, the original reading, there's a whole lot of talking going on in that. The serpent talking, Eve talking, Adam talking, God talking. Part of the way that we know the Gospels and know these stories is that, that they were shared and talked among one another and then the Gospel writers wrote them down and they wrote them down specifically in an order and, and devised them in a way for us to understand what God's doing and what he wants to accomplish. There's portions in today's Gospel where people are talking and Jesus links it with an unforgivable sin. Now, I don't know if all of us weigh, and I'll tell you, I'll guarantee, especially since I'm, I wake up talking, I go to bed talking, um, I don't always weigh my words like that, that this I may have slipped off. And, but there's something that we need to weigh in that. 
When Mark tells this today's gospels out of Mark, and we're going to be in Mark for a while, and, and we're looking at the church, and we're looking at the mission and the ministry of Jesus, and, and so Mark's telling the story, and he's putting it together, and he does something, he, he does this like four or five times in his gospel uh, here in chapter 3, chapter 5, chapter maybe 12 and 14 or something like that. Uh, but he takes two stories and combines them, kind of. And, and really, if you read it, and if you, if you listen to the gospel, it says, well, I, I, I hear Father Terry talk like this all the time. He, he starts a story and then gets distracted by a squirrel and, and eventually he'll work back to the story, maybe, you know? But that's what the story feels about. He, he starts talking about Mary and Jesus's brother, he, Jesus's family, and, and then ends up talking about Jesus's family. But you got this whole kind of stuff here in the middle that's a whole different story. If you pull them apart, they look like two separate stories. Jesus's parents, Jesus is coming back into, from Jerusalem, which is the first time that Mark mentions Jerusalem, the place where Jesus died. And that's, that's really important for Mark. But, but you come in there, Jesus is back from Jerusalem and he, he's back, back home and he hasn't even gone home. He's just busy. He's out talking, preaching, casting out demons, healing, doing, what, doing whatever, he, doing what he's supposed to do. Whether his parents felt it or whether Mary and his siblings, his, his, his biological family, either steps, cousins, or however you want to define that, his family either looked at him and looked at his schedule, looked at the work, and looked at the heck of pace, and looked at him in the center of this, wow, this, this controversy, this excitement, this whatever was going on, and they went, he's crazy. Matter of fact, they said that. He says, they said, he must be out of his mind. <laughs> At the end of the story, we come up to the house where Jesus is, and they're outside, and they're trying to send, and they're trying to pull Jesus away from the crowd. They're probably trying to get him home so they could feed him, and he could take a nap, and he could be rested, and he's busy with these people. And they say your parents, or you're not your parents, but your mother and your brothers or sisters are outside. And he goes, who are they? Here, right here. These people here that I'm with. Those people that hear the word of God and obey. It. They're my mother and my father. Or they're my mother, my brother, and my sister. And I've caught myself a couple times saying father, but there's no father mentioned in any of this. A couple of that is because God's, Jesus is God is Jesus's father. I mean, he's got a father in heaven. And also, we, we they were pretty sure at this time that Joseph had passed away. So it's just Mary and the kids. And Jesus says, I, I, I don't know. These are the ones that I'm focused on. You take that one story and you set it over their side. And, and that story there in the middle is the story about the scribes who are also down from Jerusalem who may have been saying also that he's out of his mind or really upset and disturbed about the type of ministry he's doing. This whole idea of casting out demons. This whole idea of, of uh, casting out demons. Healing people. They say, well, look, he, he's not doing this because he's from God. He's doing this because or in the power of Beelzebul, who at the time was linked with Satan. Earlier times, he was more linked with Bel, but in Jesus' lifetime and in that time, Beelzebub was always linked with Satan. And he goes, oh, because he's got the power of Satan on his side, he's casting out demons and making arrangements. These people just look he. They just look like they're in their right mind. Truthfully, they're still bound up. And, and Jesus points out and draws to the, like, the, the absurdity of that statement. Why would Satan battle Satan? Why would he try to conquer Satan? And, he's, and he says a few things that have become idioms and proverbs for us. A house divided can't stand. A kingdom divided won't stand. Some of you from your history lessons remember when uh, Abraham Lincoln said the same thing about the country. A house divided, a country divided, cannot stand. And we look at that and we see the importance of unity and the importance of agreeing. And, and he's looking at these guys and he's telling them, like, look, you're missing it. I wouldn't do this. But I have to bind the strong man first. Now, when I was growing up, I told this at 8 o'clock, and it is really true. When I was a young kid on the pew, and I'm sitting there, and the pastor talking about this story, 
I'm reading it, I'm going like, why would the Bible give me hints on how to break into a house? <laughs> you know? <laughs> why was I just told to tie up the strong man so I could plunder his house? And I'm thinking, everything I need to know, I'm learning at church. <laughs> But I don't think that was Jesus' idea there. But it was a spiritual principle that he's working at. He goes, I cannot, Satan would allow that. I've got to bind Satan first. That's why you see all this activity. And then I can plunder the things that belong to him. Because at the present time, in that present moment, the world, the kingdom, and the people were his. Satan's. So when Mark tells that story, back up. In the midst of that, he says that thing about the unforgivable sin, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I want to make a link for you at the moment. It is because they said he had a demon. It is because they were attributing to God or attributing to devil the things that are the gods. They were basically calling good people. Or transversely, they were calling evil good. It's what they were saying. Jesus said, look, there's a lot of things that God will forgive. Most everything under the sun, God will forgive. But this, not being able to distinguish or discern between good and evil, God will not forgive. And it was linked to what they were saying because we know back in the beginning when I was talking about the word, out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. So we know that for these scribes, even though they're religious leaders and ever, even though that they were some of the movers and the shakers within the faith at that time, their hearts couldn't tell evil from good or good from evil. When you express that, when you bring that out in the world and create something in and around you that does not know good from evil and evil from good, you really bind the hands of God. So there's some things. When Mark put that whole idea, those two stories together, he was talking about something or wanted us to see something. And I think for us today anyway, there's a couple things that I think is important for us to see or remember. And first, so I can get them in order this time because at 8 o'clock I did them backwards. <laughs> Just, hmm. When you follow Jesus, when you follow Christ and actually live your faith, when you watch the words you say, when you watch your activities, when you watch the things you do and the way you act in the world, when you do what God wants you to do, your family will not understand you. The church may not understand you. Those closest to you, those around, those that you associate with are not going to understand you. Matter of fact, they're going to think that you have lost your mind. Having some sort of serenity and peace, having the Lord lift, just cleanse your sins and rebooting your life and being reborn and spending time in his word and spending time with God's people. And that whole transformation that happens when we renew our minds and we start to look more like him to the world, that looks crazy. To the world, that doesn't make any sense at all. You would think that after 30 some years living with his mother and his brothers and such like that, that they would have some sort of idea of what Jesus was in the process of doing. <clears throat> Not a clue. Mary was storing things in her heart. Mary was, was, was trying to remember and pondering things. But at this moment, her pondering really led to doubt. And she's going like, hey, you know, I'm not sure about him at the moment, but he needs my help. Religious leaders who you would think would know 
the scriptures and know what God was doing and planning in the world missed it, misunderstood it, actually looked at it and called it evil. People being freed, people being healed, people being of their right mind, people coming to life, this transformation in life that's happening in them, they're looking at that going, well, that's got to be bad. I'm not far off the note because I know some of you know people who have equated what we believe and what we hold dear as hatred. They're calling something that is good evil. And I'm not too sure there's any forgiveness for that. The second thing, besides being misunderstood and besides uh, not really connecting, is that it is really hard to discern what God is actually doing when he's in the midst of doing it. It really is. And if you don't pay attention, if you don't have some sort of background, if you're not preparing your hearts, and if you're all alone, it's very, very difficult. It's interesting that Jesus connects that with the Holy Spirit in this thing because there's something about the Spirit who leads us and guides us and teaches us all truth. We need the Holy Spirit, that whole idea of Pentecost and Trinity. We need the Holy Spirit to help us to see what God is doing in this age and in this place and in this time. We need one another to help discern what God is doing now. The church now looks very different than it did just a year ago. The church a year ago looked very different than what it did 50 years ago. Now, I would venture to say and remind you that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if something has changed, it is probably... We've allowed divisions and we've allowed uh, suspicions and we've allowed um, our own comfort and flesh desiring appetites to take us away from and to draw us away from the body when we need one another to be able to discern what God is doing now. Why? Because it's important. Why? Because if I get it wrong, it's got eternal consequences. I'm somebody that's never been shy of a soapbox. I'll jump up and I, I've gone. And I, and the judgment days, it concerns me. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of words out there. I'm hoping it's out of the abundance of my heart. I'm hoping that I've been uh, are surrounded by brethren and sisters in the church that has kind of at least kept me on the same rail in, in the right direction. But for these people, not only did his family not understand what Jesus was doing, the religious leaders did not understand what Jesus was doing. Jesus was misunderstood by everybody except those that were right around him at the moment. Which brings us to the third thing. One of the things this gospel story does, and one of the things that Mark kind of lays in front of us, is this whole new formula of who is in and who is out. The people that you would think would be in next to Jesus, the people that you think would be on the inside track or have the inside corner or, or the inside word. I got a neighbor every once in a while to remind me, so well, you're closer to God, you ask him. You know, <laughs> so, people that you think would be on the inside or on the outside of the house where Jesus is talking. His family, they're on the outside of the house. They weren't inside. They weren't even allowed in. The religious leaders, they were on the outside of the house. Jesus redefines what family is, what religion is, what faith is by his presence. Those that he considers inside, those that he considers the leaders, those that he considers family now, 
are those who hear and obey the word of God. That shifts everything. Because it marks time much like our own. Status was everything. Who you knew was everything. Who you were connected to. Who your family was. Who your, that was everything. Jesus redefines that. Those in are not the ones that you thought would be in. There's those ruffians, the sinners, the tax collectors, fishermen, the rumble and tumble of the world. Not the refined, not the people that supposedly were religious leaders. Not even his own family. Those people who know and obey. It really puts a big shift in burden for us because it's hard, especially if you go back to the second point and go, how do you discern what God's will is? Or how do you know what you need to obey? And I, you know, you can't get away from reading scripture, but you also have to return to, we need one another to know. I need you. You need me. We need each other. We need God, the Holy Spirit. We need each other to know and to see and to pray and to push in and use our collective wisdom to understand and go, no, 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 this is really what God's doing. And we should rest in that and obey. Amen? Let's stand. Join me as we confess our faith in the words found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We will come. Amen. Let us kneel for prayer. For our brothers and for our nation, for those in authority and for all in public world, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Anna Doublestein and family. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, you made us in your own image and have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purpose on earth that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. <clears throat> Most merciful God, 
We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Share a sign of Christ's peace with those nearby. shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. scripture. I get by with a little help from my friends. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is your living word from before time and for all ages. By him you created all things, and by him you make all things new. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and became subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Apostle, and all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover sacrifice for us. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Yes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Yes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Yes. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Body of Christ, pray for me. Amen. Body of 
Christ the Great. Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, 
peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and be a, and remain with you always. Amen. Just uh, glanced ahead and look at the little deacon's prayer there. And again, it's talking about words. Okay. Grant, Almighty God, that the words that we have heard this day with our ears may by your grace be grafted into our hearts, that they may bring forth in us the fruit of a righteous life to the honor and praise of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.